back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, baby. It's Cuz Buster Radio, goddammit. Yeah! I'm excited about this one right here, man. I'm excited about this one. Listen, man, I go by the name of Cuss Boss Silk, your boss favorite barber, a.k.a. God's gift to you. Listen, this is Cuss Boss Silk Radio. I got my guy DJ J. Raw with me. Yep. And like I told y'all before the break, we got that guy Nate the Barber in the building. <laughs> How you feeling, big dog? How you doing? I'm feeling real good. Man, that's, really that's good. listen, the energy in the studio is so genuine and it's highly respected and there's vibes all over here, man, because... Like I said, listen, before, this is how I'm opening up. I never open up like this, but this is how I feel. I got, I owe a lot to you because you motivated me to market. You inspired me to market the way I market and promo. So it was two instances, right? The first thing, the first one was I was going to a gas station out on Mills by Morningside. And I seen a sticker on the gas pump. And I think at the time, what name was you going by? What was you going by? Fat Nate the Barber. Fat Nate the Barber. And I said, what? I took a picture. Pow. Next, the Vevy, I think it was like the Vevy next day, I went to Paul's Beauty Store. And any hairstylist, barber, know Paul's is like Toys R Us for us. Like, this is where all the products, if you don't want to wait on Amazon for it, Paul's got it. You might pay a little, little just a smudge more. But it doesn't matter. It's like, you be pressed to have it. Like, I'm one of them guys. I hate buying shit online because I want my shit when I spend my money. But, <laughs> you know, but I was going to pause. I seen the same sticker right before you go in pause. <laughs> so I DM'd him. I'm different, nigga. I DM'd him. It was like, boy, I loved what I see. I like what I see. It was something in them. I got the text message. I think it was like 2017. Mm -hmm. And that was the, I never met you before. Never met you before. I genuinely just felt like I needed to text you. I mean, you know, DM you, whatever. And then the, our next encounter was, I want, I'm, yo, listen, I consider myself a real one because of the fact how I move. And if I like something, mm -hmm. I like it. And I'm going to let you know I like it. I hit you and was like, yo, that beer shampoo, what is that? Uh -huh. And you was like, that's my product that's coming out. And you was like, I'm going to bring you one. What? For real? I want to buy it, but I'm going to get I'm going to give you this. Mm hmm Man, I use that, use that. You hear what I tell you? I don't think you ever. You go if you go on my app and you hit the book button. Mm -hmm. It say the pro, the shampoo. It say pro. What is it? Pro grooming. Yes, sir. I'm not. I'm not pump faking or nothing. Other barbers, there's not too many barbers that be like you know use another nigga product too. You know what I mean? That's just be different. We were talking about that. You got a great product. Pro grooming beard shampoo. Is that what it's called? So. Whole product line is pro maintenance. Okay, pro maintenance. I rebranded myself as pro grooming. Uh huh. But my product line is pro maintenance. So we got pro maintenance. Right now, officially, we have pro maintenance beard oil, pro maintenance comb, pro maintenance comb, and then the pro maintenance hats. I'm I'm working now to get my the beard wash branded. So what you got was like my sample phase, but I'm ready to get it branded. That's, that is fire, my brother. I wanted to, that's how I wanted to start it off. Man, I appreciate that. I wanted to make sure we got the branding out the way. Because our conversation is going to get heavy at times. Mm -hmm. We're going to laugh. We're going to go through some, you know, memories and mm -hmm. how, how I feel to be certain places in our life just from cutting hair. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I want to take, because I never, I don't get the, the pleasure of talking to somebody that can relate to me. When I first started doing radio, I said my, my whole mindset was, I'm only going to interview nail techs, barbers, and stylists. Mm -hmm. But I said to get the actual listeners, I gotta, you know, I gotta throw the candy around, you know, get the big, the people that's popping in the city and stuff like that. I just to dig the viewership. But my real definition and real meaning for this show was, I wanted to have the nail techs, the barbers, the stylists, the clothes, the designers. I wanted to have them for them to have a platform. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. cause nobody show us love. Nobody promotes the barber or the hairstylist. So I said, forget it. It's like when I started it, it's like the you know the inmates running the jail, and that's how we moving. That's how I want to do, and I want to you know what I mean? Like you, my first person like from our world on the show. Hell no. I promise you. For real? Yes. Oh, and it was intentionally done that way. Oh, my man. You was the first one I reached out to because I genuinely respect your craft. When you sent me the DM. Ooh talking about something and you sent me the DM and uh -huh. he was like hey can I can I get you on the show you should have looked at my face like 
like, I was waiting for you to ask me. What took you so long? Come on. No, man, I was like, scared. Niggas gonna say no. No, I ain't got it, time. You, bro. Like, you said it real, like, humble, nigga. Like, I was happy. I gave you stats. That's the first. So I gave him stats because I, I you know you gotta he didn't persuade. Have to. I wanna persuade you, bro. He didn't like, have to. He just said, be there. Like, I'm here. You didn't have to give me stats. I mean, I appreciate you giving me stats. <laughs> but listen, I'm here. I was gonna be here. Yeah, I yeah, good. I told my wife, like, I'm sending a message like, yo, I'm about to be on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, man, I like that feeling, bro. Yeah. Because it was so crazy. Now, and I'm going to give you behind the scenes conversation. And people might judge me on me saying this, right? But mm-hmm. I was talking to my DJ and I said, bro, and I was talking to my brother earlier. I said, you know what's crazy? And no disrespect. I appreciate all our guests. No disrespect. But I just got to make a point. And I'm, which, because I'm, I'm, marketing is huge in our world now. Before, because before barbers, only barber you knew was the barber that was in your neighborhood. Mm-hmm. But now it's like, you know, I didn't know it was a barber across town that was nice because of social media. What, what, what I don't understand is out of all the guests we had on the show, not one guest posted the actual video on that page of, of the uh, of that interview. For real? It's it bugs. They put the story out. But they never they put it on the story, but they never put it on that page. And that's not me saying like, yo, I want to be on your page. No, it's the I'm talking about from the the marketing standpoint. Like, you been on the ready. I don't care if it's one person on the twenty thousand that we have every day. Shout out to our listeners live. Mm-hmm. But it's just a fact. It's though like, bro, it makes you look bigger than life. Think there about it. There you go. You said it. It makes it get the perception. Cause that's the social media is nothing but perception. And that's how we move. That's how we do business. That's the big secret. I'm sorry. I let the cat out the bag. The <laughs> perception is the big is a big part of our marketing. Mm-hmm. My my room look glorious, but you don't see the dirt stain over there on the wall. Purposely. You know, it's the perception of it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, that blows my mind. Like, that's crazy. I, I that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, like marketing is everything. Mm-hmm. Good, bad, or devil. I'm being honest. Like, what happens it, is it also it was a level of respect too that I posted it because you asked me to come on your show. So why would I not let everybody know, man? Listen, y'all better follow this man right here because he showed me love. We so appreciate it. It was more. That had to be more than a story. We definitely appreciate it because I didn't understand. I'm like, that's just blowing my mind. Anyway, listen. Now let's get to the nitty gritty. What made you become a barber, man? Talk to me. My man. Ah, right, that's a good one. You know who made me become a barber? He ain't listening, but I'm gonna tell him about it. His name was Ty Furby. Okay. I was. I had facial hair in middle school. So you've been growing your business in middle school? But it was like a light facial hair. But yeah, back yeah. then, if you had a light light amount of facial hair, everybody thought they thought I was older than what I was. Yeah. So I had to go to the barbershop and get a shape up at an early age. I had cornrows. So I was in the barbershop, walking to the barbershop by myself. Walked to the barbershop one day, met up with this guy named Ty Furby. That was the first barber I really met with and locked with. And I thought it was just so cool. Because I'm in the barbershop every day. Every week, I'm sorry. Every week, I'm walking to the barbershop. I'm getting to know everybody in there. And I just love how things, just how it was in there. How you got to meet people, the conversations. But my senior project, everybody had to do a senior project in school? Yeah, yeah. My senior project was on barber. That's dope. And then it was over from then. I wanted to be a barber. I almost, almost waited like two, three more years after I decided to be one. My mother forced me to be one. She was like, you want to do it? Go do it now. So I went to barber school. Shout out to Avaris Academy. But really shout out to Ty Furby. First guy ever really put that into my head to be a barber. And you left something out, though. You see how many girls he was getting, dude. Let's keep it a buck. Out, yo. <laughs> was Furby getting girls? Listen. I, yo, uh, girls coming to the shop showing them attention. You like... No, no, I, yo, bro, bro, my that, story okay, different, bro. You know what? So maybe down the line, okay, down the line, you, s- barbers, no, you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. Hey, yo, I'm when, keeping- when did you become a barber? When? I don't know. I've been cutting hair since I was 14. When did you get the shop? First shop, 24, uh, down on Egan Greenmount, across from the jail. So when I got into the barber, when I first got into it, I don't know. I ain't see a lot of. Furby was older than me. Okay. So I ain't see a lot of like females flocking to him. Okay. Not saying Furby wasn't a man because yeah, Furby yeah. was the man back then, but I, yeah, yeah. that wasn't with me. Now, as I got older, you start seeing the females come yeah. left and right and you see them. But that I think that my father me. failed me, brother. I'm, <laughs> saying, I'm listening to your story. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm just, I think my father failed me. It was, I'm telling you. My like, father was your, fir- was your, you know, that was my father. From mm-hmm. Like, who, you said his name was what again? Ty Furby. Ty Furby. My pops was 
Same story. Mm-hmm. Like I'm in the shop. My father was a ball. My father been cutting since 30 years. Still cut to this day. Where? Uh, he used to be up cilantro. We all used to be in one big room. Me, him, and Miss. Shout out, Mr. Mike. That's my. That's my. That's my barber mentor, Mr. Mike. And now he's back on uh, Baltimore and Hilton, mm-hmm. where he at his old shop. But boy, I used to go up down Baltimore and Hilton, sit there all day. Boy, boy. Of, Mr. Tony used to be like, "That's your step brother right there." I'd be like, "What, nigga? My father ain't married. You step brother." Mm-hmm. Oh no, that was one of the, you know the kids. He's messing with that mother, so they get the free haircuts. My father had a lot of them. <laughs> I'm giving you the buck. I'm giving you the whole buck. So I used to, well, my father had money all the time. Throw the big boy expedition with the Eddie Bauer when they first dropped early 2000. Right. It was just an inspir- like, oh, I was like, I want to be like my pop. My pop was cool. They called him Silk. That's what you. That's where I got the name got from. from. Cause they used to say Lil Silk, but my father's name was Silk. Like that's a cool shit. My father mm-hmm. was. He was just a cool dude, right? And the girls, all he always had women. I was like, I'm gonna be like that. That shit gets you in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it from the. Uh... <laughs> I saw it from the respect aspect of it. Big like, fat, like in the neighborhood. I seen, like, I seen the respect that yo got. Like when people came in, Furby was the man in the shop, yo. Everybody wanted to get in Furby's chair. It was like you tell people you went to Furby, you was the man. Like everybody wanted to go to Ty Furby when I was there. Yeah. So I just saw that and I saw the love he got and the respect he got. I was like, yo, I want that. I want that, that came with love. It. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I don't and then with the respect, all the, the women and the fake, the fake love come with oh, it too. So, so let's get into that, right? How how 